Welcome back to another marvellous production about cars driving on things. In this video, I'm going to Mount Walker to try not to get stuck or make a mess. So as I'll be there overnight, I'd better make sure I pack adequately. So now that I'm suitably packed and adequately dressed, we can stop looking at my face and start looking at a car driving on off-road things where maybe some stuff happens. The first stop on this trip is about two hours out of Sydney to a place called Hanging Rock. If you check out some videos on YouTube about this place, you'll find that it used to be used as a pretty amazing swing for people with a death wish. Now, unfortunately, too many people ran out of skill doing this and they decided to ban it and fine anyone who tries it as they do in New South Wales. Now once you get to the car park, it's about a four kilometer walk each way. So as we're a little bit lazy, we figured we'd chuck the bikes on the roof and cut down on a bit of time this way. This is also the reason why I've got a bicycle stuck to my car for the entire trip. Oh, I'm sorry. Peck, 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 peck. You be careful. It was at this point in our travels we decided it would be a good idea to not freeze to death at night. So we stopped to gather some firewood and test out my new Milwaukee chainsaw. That noise you just heard was the air fitting snapping off the back of my car. The result of this was that I lost all air pressure and couldn't use my lockers. Now this was a problem because I decided to take a more challenging line. Sorry, what I mean to say is I took a bad line, which meant that I struggled quite a bit to get up here. Sorry YouTubers, your secret's out. Anyway, now I'll stop talking so you can listen to V8 noise. <laughs> Let's see how the Prado manages on this section.
Further up ahead, there's a part of the trek that goes through a small river crossing. It was here that I found out a Mavic Mini's height sensor doesn't detect water, and this is the last scene it took. But on the plus side, it means no more drone shots for the rest of this video. After this, we found what we thought was a pretty good campsite, so we set up for the night. Then shortly afterwards, we realized some disgraceful bastards had dumped a load of asbestos right near where we were going to camp, so we decided to find another place. Definitely better than the other axe. Sure. It's still really It's bigger than most of the adapters. Yeah. I mean, no more adapters like two amps. A top tip when camping in the bush is to utilize your Oriental fire starter. Now when you have one of these, it's best to equip them with your tools of choice. You usually select these when you first purchase them, but I got mine second hand. So he came equipped with paper plates and a frisbee. However, even though the process takes a long time, it did manage to succeed in the end. So a highly recommended product. Being a Sunday night, unfortunately regular people have to work on Mondays. So I was left to explore the rest of the treks the following day on my own. I was beginning to worry because I hadn't seen any evidence of assholes lately, but faith restored. So it's first thing in the morning, it's a little bit cold, and I've already encountered my mortal enemy. The muddy puddle. So it's pretty amazing when you explore the tracks that aren't actually on the maps. So I've just come around one track and I've found something pretty impressive. It's uh, what's known as a natural cock formation. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to be having a go at this one. I might if it was summer or if I had someone with me, but I don't want to wade that seeing as it's negative four degrees outside and I'll just go back another way
It's around this sort of time I have to think about airing up, and usually I just jump out and turn on the compressor. But seeing as that lovely piece of track has destroyed my air fitting, I've got to slowly limp my way to a fuel station to get air like a commoner. <laughs>